welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're going to look at George Romero's take on vampire lore with the 1977 film Martin. If you're kind of a little shy about your thirst for blood, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get to it. We open on an overnight train to New York. Martin heads to the toilet to prepare a syringe and gently busts in on a lady he's been watching to try and seduce her with some free drugs. She rejects his offer after it's too late and he persistently begs her to just go to sleep. I mean, he explains how important it is to him and everything. After she settles into unconsciousness, he does a little play seduction before opening her vein. He drinks her blood, then makes the room up like a suicide and disembarks in Pittsburgh. Here he meets his uncle Kuda, and they hop another train, head into town, and eventually arrive at Kuda's house. He offers to save Martin's soul and destroy him before taking him to his room. He consistently refers to him as Nosferatu and tries to set some ground rules, like no feasting on members of the local community or he'll destroy him. Same and salvation. And Martin tries to insist he's just a normal bro, no magic here, my dude. The next day, we learn Kuda's slanging meat to all the local blue hairs. While at home, Martin meets his cousin, Christina, who never ever at any point stops talking. This eventually brings him out of his shell, and he shares his classic finger guillotine trick at dinner. But then Christina's boyfriend, Arthur, shows up, causing Martin to slink off somewhere. Martin soon takes to delivering packets of meat for Kuda and hits the jackpot on his second delivery, where he meets Abby, who answers the door in her bodysuit and gives him a ride back into town. Town. Along the way, she unloads all of her marital dissatisfactions on him, and he listens well, saying nothing in return. Believing him to be both the perfect man and an absolute snack, she puts him on retainer to do some odd jobs around the house. That night, Martin hears Kuda arguing with Christina about their cursed lineage, marred by the presence of Nosferatai in their family tree. The next day, Martin confides that he's glad she doesn't believe in all that superstitious nonsense, but then also claims to be 84 years old, so... He resists the idea of medical intervention for what she interprets as a mental dysfunction, so she recommends they all have a sit-down to discuss the issue at some point. They're interrupted by the arrival of the phone man, installing some fresh lines in the house, which now allows her the luxury of having arguments with Arthur at all times of day and night. Meanwhile, Martin heads out to hit up the local erotic bookstore and familiarizes himself with his surroundings, which involves watching ladies and stalking out their home situations. He returns to her later with a universal garage door opener and makes his way through the house while having flashbacks to his first conquest. But he walks in on an unexpected situation. Thinking fast, he gives Lewis a little prick on his back and runs off. This creates some confusion as the lovers ponder the best course of action for after a stranger injects you with an unknown substance. He manages to confound their attempts to call for help and hits both victims with a dose of his sleepy time juice. This really gets Lewis geared up, but the double hit proves to be too much. Martin drags him to the woods where he pokes his throat with a stick and drinks him up. As we observe the outcome of his first hunt, which also ended under non-ideal circumstances, we hear Martin talking about himself to an unknown party about his difficulty in engaging in sexy stuff with active participants. As we focus back in on current time, we see it's Martin using his handy new landline to spill his guts to a late night radio DJ. He finds himself back at Abby's house for some handiwork, and when she gently caresses him, he runs off like a jackrabbit. When he gets home, he finds they're dining with Father Howard, a man toward whom Kuda openly expresses his his dissatisfaction that young priests like him don't believe any longer in important matters like demons entering the body. He does scoff at him, but is polite enough to recommend a crazy old cooter he can talk to. Pretty soon, without even a hello, Father Zlemus is there to awkwardly provide a lazy and unsolicited prayer slash exorcism over Martin, which continues even after he just sort of walks away. Confirming that for Father Zlemus, it's mostly about ritual. Martin decides to get his payback that night, following Kuda through the mist and damn near giving him a heart attack when he lunges at him from the darkness. However, he reveals that it was all just elaborate costuming because he was just wanting to make a mockery of his belief system. Encouraged by his newfound assertiveness, Martin arrives at Abby's home to announce that he's ready to try the sex. He comes out of the experience positively glowing, which is why he's surprised to see her so sad. That bad, huh? Things begin to unravel at home when Kuda convinces Arthur to follow his instincts to leave town, and recommends against sticking it out with Christina due to her likely rancid womb. When she voices her anger at his meddling in her personal affairs, he pretty much seals the deal. We learn soon after that she's leaving with Arthur regardless, if for no other reason than to get out of town. An upsetting development for Martin who now finds himself alone with Kuda, constantly berated by civil society, and incapable of selecting fresh victims now that his sexual satisfaction is being safe 
emaciated by a conscious woman. The shakes get so bad he ends up bludgeoning some hobos and using broken glass to get at their life juice. He continues to make sloppy mistakes when he breaks into a thrift store for some fresh clothes, attracting the attention of the police. As he flees, he stumbles into some sort of secret meeting for gun enthusiasts. He manages to narrowly avoid injury in the ensuing shootout that kills everyone else present. After this, he seeks consolation in his relationship with Abby, but finds the strain of their infidelity was too taxing on her, and she took her own life. He resolves to get back to his normal, comfortable process moving forward. However, Kuda got wind of Abby's death, and doesn't believe it was done by her own hand. True to his word, he stakes Martin as he sleeps with no offer of salvation, and unceremoniously buries him in the front garden. <laughs> Honestly, I said we'd look at a non-standard vampire movie in this episode, but really, it seems like almost all vampire stories not based on the original material take the idea in a relatively new or different direction. It seems to be a very malleable and universally engaging story. If you enjoy the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.